Hello and welcome to this new past paper series. Each video will contain one of the past papers from Cambridge for the syllabus 0648. Today's paper is Food and Nutrition Paper 1 Theory, October November 2020. That is the winter series. A deficiency disease occurs if a nutrient is lacking in the body. Name one nutrient which is lacking if the body has the following diseases. A goiter is a swelling in your neck. This is usually occurs this usually occurs due to the deficiency of iodine. Iodine is used in the production of hormones from the thyroid which is located in your neck. Next, pellagra. Pellagra occurs when a lack of vitamin B3 occurs. You may also know this by the term niacin. Next deficiency disease, marasmus. This occurs in severe malnutrition. So to avoid that happening, we need to eat lots of protein. A similar disease would be Kawashioko, which you may have heard of as well. Anemia, this is probably one of the easier ones out of them, is iron, <laughs> a lack of iron. And night blindness occurs with a lack of vitamin A. Uh, which if you have a plant source is beta carotene and if you have an animal source also known as retinol. So strawberries can be used in smoothies to provide a source of vitamin C. Name four other different sources of vitamin C that could be used in a fruit smoothie. Well, as we're based in Malaysia, I'm going to be using local fruit. So a pineapple is an excellent source. Of course, you can have uh, blueberries, you can also have um, strawberries, you could have blueberries, you can also have uh, raspberries, blackberries, etc. Um, but as I say, I'm using local fruit here. Okay. That makes it, that would make a delicious that would make a delicious smoothie. I think I'd like to throw in a bit of uh, coconut milk with that. Right. State four reasons why the body requires vitamin C. We need vitamin C um, to help absorb iron. That's why it's always a good idea if you have like spinach in your salad is to make sure that you've got some uh, think something like cherry tomatoes in there or, or you've got lemon juice in your dressing. Yeah. It'll help absorb the iron containing contained in your green salad vegetables. It will also help uh, with healthy skin. prevent scurvy you remember that disease that all the pirates had uh, due to them being on ships for long periods of time and not having access to any fresh fruit or vegetables it also helps to make connective tissue well all kinds of tissue and in particular connective and that's another reason why it's good for maintaining skin or well, the connective tissue. Okay. All right. Question three. Study the label below from a pre-packed chicken sandwich. It says used by the 20th of November 2020. You can see the nutritional information, the energy, protein, carbohydrates of which are sugar, fats and saturated fats, fiber and sodium. Now let's look at the ingredients. OK, 
Okay. So the main ingredient of this um, sandwich is chicken. Okay. We've also got a uh, white bread. Okay. The two main ingredients. Neither. Okay. So the main source of protein in this sandwich, of course, we've mentioned this before, is the chicken. So identify three different alternative proteins that could be used so that a vegan could eat the sandwich. Okay, so we need to um, change up. We need to change up the chicken to make and still keep the sandwich tasty. So we could do a tofu burger. In we could do a tofu. We could also create a lentil burger. I quite like lentil burgers. <laughs> lentil burgers, a tofu burger. We could also use um, a vegan cheese or even something like um, nuts, like a peanut butter. Okay. Uh, thus, our peanut butter, maybe combine that with some uh, vegan cheese. That might be a nice filling. There we go. Okay, so the fiber content in this sandwich, as you can see up here, is pretty low at 1.2 grams. So identify two different changes which could be made to increase the fiber content of this sandwich. Well, if we look at the ingredients in particular of the sandwich, we notice that we've just got white bread with spread, dairy-free spread, and some chicken and that's it. That's a very plain sandwich. So in order to e make some more changes, we can increase the NSP or the non-soluble uh, polysaccharide by including uh, salad or even coleslaw, for example, as a type of salad. Or you could do a green salad. Um, and another um, option that you've got is we could, depending on the flavor, you know, you might want to make it, um, you might want to include some curry in the dressing, in which case it might be a good idea to add uh, some dried fruit. Or you could add some char-grilled vegetables like char grilled peppers, for example, capsicum peppers. Okay, State so five benefits of increasing fiber in the diet. Okay, so the main, the main one there would be to prevent what we call constipation. Um, the fiber absorbs water uh, so this will make the uh, feces um, soft and bulky thus making it see see point above will help it make it much easier to pass um, motions and therefore preventing constipation um, we'll also aid in the prevention Oops. Uh, so diseases such as bowel cancer and diverticulitis, which is where you um, holes occur in your uh, large intestine. Okay, uh, lowers cholesterol. That's the bad kind. There we go. 
Um, it also um, controls satiety. In other words, it keeps you fuller for longer. So it keeps you fuller for longer, thus helping, I say, with weight management. Okay. Right, so now we're going to talk about um, digestion of the sandwich. What's going to happen to it in our bodies? Right, so name two enzymes involved in the digestion of the bread in the sandwich. Well, bread is a carbohydrate. So I can begin by saying that that's going to be digested in my mouth. And that would be salivary amylase. Uh, the second part that as it continues through, I can include perhaps in the intestines, in the intestinal juice. The enzyme that would occur in there would be maltase. Okay, so just going to change the color of the pen for you guys. There we go. Okay. Right, so, and then finally, name two enzymes involved in the digestion of the chicken. The chicken being the protein in the sandwich as opposed to the carbohydrates. So the, the pancreatic juices. And in the pancreatic juice would occur trypsin. And in your intestinal juices, peptides. Okay. So there, I've just got my <laughs> full marks on those two questions. Okay, so we're moving on now to talk about uh, or look at the person who has celiac disease. So somebody who has celiac disease, which is an autoimmune disease, um, will uh, not be able to eat the sandwich as it contains wheat flour in the bread. List four starchy foods that a person with celiac disease could eat. You could also have things like beans, chickpeas, rice, sago, so okay, so why is there a use by date on the packaging for this sandwich? Uh, mainly because it's chicken. Uh, they will have uh, use by dates on all, but chicken is what they what we call a high risk food. So you know it needs to be kept refrigerated, and. Um, it needs to be used fairly quickly. This is uh, to avoid food poisoning. So in other words, um, chickens are, and to avoid food poisoning, we have to eat by the use by date. Okay, the sandwich is packaged in a plastic sleeve. Give six reasons why food is packaged like this. Okay, first of all, it keeps uh, the food contained. I mean, nobody wants to be eating a sandwich or, or carrying, tr uh, carrying the sandwich around and it all falls apart. Uh, so we can transport the sandwich and perhaps we want to bring it back to our fridge. So we keep the food contained. We can transport and storage easy, uh, easily. You know, both in the shop as well. So, you know, we're talking about from the shop 
to your house but equally what about from the you know warehouse or wherever it's prepared to the to the shop Um, depending on the type of food, we can use it to reheat the food. So, for example, um, if you're looking at microwavable food. In this case, I don't think the um, chicken sandwich is necessarily microwavable, but other food might be. So we can reheat the food in the packaging itself. We might get microwavable dishes. We can also increase the shelf life. So if you think about the life of a baked bean or um, a red kidney bean or something like that, um, you know, we can, you can do that by including things in tins. For example, uh, that's then gonna last maybe two, three years as opposed to just, you know, a few days if it's fresh. Uh, the packaging also protects the food. From damage. Or bruising. So perhaps apples or something you don't want. Um, if you think about that. There we go, apples and examples. Um, and lastly, uh, we also want to prevent, prevent dust, or vermin, mm, insects from contaminating. So some kind of good uh, common sense, <laughs> some good common sense uh, reasons there. Um, there are other ones that we haven't mentioned, you know, reduces food wastage. We can also attract customers. We can also put information on a package. So if you go back to the chicken package above, we've got information on that that we couldn't actually put on a sandwich, could we? We can have... Yeah, the, the sandwich. I'm going to go with a thinner pen <laughs> for this one. So if we have our sandwich, we've got our triangle sandwich. Okay. And then our sandwich goes in there. You can see it from the inside. We can actually put uh, information on here, can't we? On our package. So all of this stuff here can then go on to our package. So that's another reason that we can package things. Okay. Right, so uh, nutritionists advise eating at least two portions of fish every week. Justify the nutritional benefits of including fish in your diet. Okay. Oily fish contains omega-3 which is excellent for your brain. Okay. Right, you have calcium in uh, tinned fish bones. for healthy bones and teeth. Okay, so there's my point one, point two, calcium in tin fish. Point three, it's um, what we call a high biological value protein. 
as opposed to low biological value, which is something like beans or lentils. High biological vo uh, value protein. And protein is needed for um, growth of your body and development. Uh, next, <laughs> we talked earlier about this, uh, it provides iodine for thyroid function. Your thyroid um, produces T2 and T3 hormones. So that's what we need for there. So how are we doing now? One, two, three, four. We've got four points, two more. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about white fish as opposed to oily fish. So white fish is um, low in fat. And in particular in actually... White fish is low in saturated fat. Which is good for coronary heart disease. Um, also, lastly, uh, white fish is also low in calories. So, as you would imagine, which is good for uh, weight management. Right, so list four points to look for when buying fresh white fish from the fish market. Okay, I've included a little bit about this in my uh, video on fish preparation. You can check that out. So we're looking for clear eyes. Shouldn't be cloudy at all, shouldn't be bloody. They should be nice and sparkly. Maybe even have a twinkle. You should be looking for red gills, so that when you look them, when you look uh, pull, so when you pull them up and look through, you should be able to see red inside. They should have a good fresh smell. And they should be firm and plump. So we can use our fish to make some delicious fish cakes. Uh, cod is a white fish, uh, not native to Malaysia. So let's use some local fish to here. Name two different white fish. Well, the biggest white fish that we eat in this region of the world is uh, tilapia and sea bass. We could use either one. So we're going to use herbs to flavor our fish cakes. Again, using local, we could use some coriander. We could also use some curry leaves. Kaffir lime leaves, but I'm going to stick with other um, things. We could also use what we call the dawn soup, which is the um, flat leaf parsley. So what advantages of shallow frying as a method of cooking? 
Okay, it is quite a qu quick method. Uh, uses less oil than deep frying. You also get a nice uh, crispy brown texture on the outside of the food. which can be, um, you know, both, it, it's, that has a good visual appeal. And also, um, as it's cooking, um, it has a, uh, develops a good aroma. You know, you think about we're shy, we could be shallow frying our fish cakes in butter and garlic, <laughs> um, which make which makes it appetizing. In other words, you're kind of developing um, people's senses when you're fr when you're frying. Um, quick method of cooking, so, um, and therefore, just like to add on the point there, uses less fuel as well. You know, it's not something you're necessarily cooking for a long time. So, it is healthier. There we go. Okay, so five, gui five guidelines to follow uh, when shallow frying. I think what we're talking about guidelines is uh, safety. Um, okay, so my first one here would be to uh, don't uh, crowd the pan uh, s so that the food will um, steam. fry because you're trying to get rid of the um, the liquid that the food contains so that you get that nice brown um, coloration on the outside okay um, obviously the same with deep frying is don't leave your pan and stove unattended Okay, you want to make sure that um, you know you are constantly um, there at the at the, the side. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, in terms of health and safety, I would suggest you have a damp cloth. But you could use, I suppose, a pan lid to cover the pan. In case of f fire, um, okay. Uh, make sure that your temperature is correct. Or butter is correct. Um, so your food doesn't burn. And then lastly, make sure that we turn the food over to ensure it cooks thoroughly. 
what you're looking for there is that you have you've got your stake there and you need to ensure that uh, you have cooked it here in the middle so the center temperature needs to be uh, plus over 65 degrees centigrade so especially for example if you're cooking steak uh, you want to ensure that the center of the steak even if you are having it uh, medium rare <laughs> that the center temperature is uh, cooked okay right let's move on to the next question okay so identify five points to consider when choosing a pan for shallow frying I would go with something that is probably non-stick uh, so you can use less oil and then it's easy to remove food particularly your omelette for example uh, the pan should have a good balance uh, should have feel uh, nice to hold what I mean by balance is you know where you've got your handle here and then you have your p your bowl of your pan here there we go so when you hold it the should the handle length should be uh, feel good in your hand okay uh, it should conduct heat evenly Uh, particularly across the base. Mm. Have I s still spelt across wrong? <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> I feel like I have, I feel like there's only one A in across. Okay. Um, evenly across the base. Uh, so maybe we need a heavy, heavy base. You know, even a cast iron. Cast iron pan. Um, let's think about budget. You know, and the so in other words there's no sense in you buying the most expensive cast iron pan uh, you need to fit one within must be within your budget the daisy right and then lastly um, you could talk about the color here you know to match your kitchen you may want to keep an aesthetic so 0.5 as a color is to um, so for example you might want to buy uh, you know all copper pans or then you might want to go for all ceramic, etc. So, you know, you, you've got a particular theme in mind. Or uh, moisture. You could have uh, a meat that's particularly dry. So, for example, uh, we could have roast chicken. And then we usually serve that with a gravy, the sauce being gravy. Okay, so that would be a pouring sauce. Um, you could also have, um, so we could use prawns and, for example, a romesco sauce, which is a composite. Uh, we could also add color. You know, we've got boring brown, pra boring brown pasta. Let's add some color by putting in a ragu uh, sauce. 
and pesto pasta there we go ragu is generally tomato tomato based hope you guys are going to be able to read this when you go back right moving on to question number six name two bacteria that can cause food poisoning okay right there we go e coli and salmonella list three symptoms of food poisoning hopefully you guys are not not going to be able to list this from um from personal experience but of course uh, nausea and vomiting which is the same same sort of thing uh, you may have diarrhea and of course don't forget about diarrhea but of course if you're going to write diarrhea you need to be able to spell it mm, maybe headaches Okay, list five safety rules which will help delay food spoilage when using a refrigerator. Okay, the biggest one here is to ensure correct temperature. And that should be between uh, one to five degrees centigrade. Um, if it's too hot or too cold, um, you can get freezer damage on your or cold da frost damage on your vegetables. Uh, so you don't want to go below one degrees. Um, don't overstock it. Which will allow air to circulate. Uh, food should be covered and dated, you know, so what you're talking about when it is cooked. So, for example, if you've prepared pasta and you're putting it in the fridge to keep it, it needs to be dated. So we need to make sure that you rotate food. So when you rotate food, make sure that you're using the older food first so that when the new food goes in, so you've got a stack of... of um, blocks of cheese or something that you put the oldest cheese at the front so that's the one that gets used past okay. uh, also uh, make sure that it is uh, cleaned and defrosted especially if you just have uh, one of the fridges that have the ice boxes at the top um you know which can um uh, become overrun with ice if you don't take care of it regularly okay so you have a choice here of what you answer you can discuss the importance and uses of soya bean and their products in preparation of meals or you can discuss the factors which need to be considered when planning and preparing meals to minimize the risk of family members suffering from obesity. It is of a high biological value. Which is actually the only one 
Um, it is predominantly vegetarians. Um, as it contains all the essential amino acids. Um, I do want to point out on, on these essay questions that it is important that you don't use bullet points. They are expecting you to discuss here. Um, so you do need to sort of put together pros and cons of it and not just uh, bullet points. Okay, so it's used mostly by vegetarians as it contains all the essential amino acids. Um, it's also a low in fat. And so um, doesn't add to uh, coronary really don't know what that weird what that weird thing is that I <laughs> just move away from the middle um, so it doesn't add to coronary heart disease at all okay um, it's also low in calories So it's good for weight loss. Okay. Uh, what I will say as well is, in terms of nutrition, um, it is an excellent source. Of iron. B1, which is uh, thiamine, B3, which we mentioned earlier in the beginning, which is an uh, excellent source of uh, niacin. Oops. Excellent. What? No, cancel. Stay on page. What was that about? I just wanted to press the eraser. Um, it's also an excellent source of uh, calcium. Um, which is good for your for teeth and bones. Or oh, vitamin B. Uh, B1, thiamine, B3, niacin, calcium, which is good for your teeth and bones. Um, it's also because um, there's no uh, risk. Okay, so there's no risk of animal diseases, BSE, uh, mad cow disease, otherwise known as avian flu or food poisoning. You know, it's not an animal product, it's plant it is plant-based. 
Um, also, another thing it doesn't contain. Wow, that's the biggest colon ever. <laughs> doesn't. Uh, gluten. So it can be eaten by celiacs, which we uh, discussed um, earlier when we were talking about the um, the lack of gluten. Okay, um, it's cheap compared to meat. And it's cheap to cheaper to produce. You know, you don't have all the animal rearing. If you think about, you know, rearing chickens, for example. Right, so um, that, that's a lot of information about soya. So uh, where can we use it? So think about in what kind of dishes that we can use. Well, we have a couple of different uses of it. We can use the bean sprouts um, in salads. Uh, we can also use them in stir fries. Um, in soups, spring rolls. Uh, soy milk, another byproduct or another, you know, is... <laughs> to figure out my spelling, there we go. So soy milk uh, is good for those of you who are lactose intolerant. Um, so it's good for those also as uh, healthy alternative to cow's milk, particularly you know babies as well. Um, when uh, for baby formula, uh, another thing for vegans can drink it as well. And then we have, um, we've also got, so we can, the when we press the beans together, they're fermented or the bean curd. To replace meat in meals. It's easily digested so that it's good for the elderly. and vegetarians and vegans. Hmm. No. So another product of uh, soy is uh, tempeh which is made from fermented beans.
Uh, don't forget as well, we talk about um, about s uh, soy sauce. Which is made from uh, fermented soybeans. And we use as a condiment you could we could also talk about um we could also talk about soy in terms of uh, miso soup which we can use uh we can also talk about edami edanami we can also talk about edanami beans edamami can be eaten as a delicious snack. Mm. Um, we also have something called a uh, textured vegetable protein. Which can then be shaped and formed into uh, burgers and sausages. Right, so um, yeah, it's uh, cheaper. So there you go. We've talked about, discussed the importance and use of uh, soybeans and their products and preparation in meals. Uh, so we've talked about here um, how we'd use the bean sprouts in the salads, but we can also use uh, soy milk as a healthy alternative for vegans can drink it. Uh, bean curd can be used to replace uh, meat in meals for elderly vegetarians. Tempeh is made from fermented soya beans and used in soups, stews and curries. In fact, I think you even serve it in the canteen at school. I think they even serve it in the dining hall at school. Uh, soy sauce is made for fermenting soya beans. Uh, it's used as a condiment. Um, ed edamame beans are eaten as a snack. <laughs> At least I eat them as a snack anyway. And then TVP, let's just put that in in brackets, is like that. There we go. Okay, so uh, for that, I would expect uh, full marks. So remember um, here, if we can just go back a bit. Uh, so 15 marks, we're looking at 15 points made. So make sure that you've got 15 and that you've got some uh, justification in there as well. So some kind of reasoning. <laughs> 